Here we go. Uh, it's been a little while, but we're looking at this particular graph. Hopefully you recognize that this is an x squared and a y squared, which definitely gets rid of our parabolas. So it is a circle. The nice thing is, is it's from it, both of the centers are the same. So I really just need to make sure that I get these centers and then I'm checking to find out what the radius actually is. So I need to move things around. Hopefully you remember we group our x's together and we group our y's together. And I'm going to go ahead and move my 11 over to the other side. And then what I need to do here is um, make it so that I can have it be a quantity squared. So it needs to be a perfect trinomial square. So I need to divide this by 2 and square it, which ends up being 1. So I need to also add a 1 to the other side. And then here I'm going to do the same thing, divide that by 2, which is 2, square it, which is 4. So I'm going to add that to both sides. So I'm going to factor this. It's always square root, square root, and the sign um, in the middle. You can, of course, do a diamond problem if you needed to do that and didn't remember how. You do the same thing, square root, square root, sign of the middle. Again, diamond problem would work just fine. So then we end up with 16 over here. So yes, the vertex is 1 and 2 because it's the opposite of that and the opposite of that. Um, but the radius, remember, this is equal to r squared. So r would just be equal to 4. So that's our answer. Let's look at 2. 2, we got milkshakes, cost $2, right. I'm pretty sure it's more than that, but that's okay. So we have $2 for a small and $3 for a large. And let's see, our total money is 76 when I add all that fun stuff together. Now the other equation that's not quite as explicit here is that however many smalls and larges we added up together, we did sell a total one, a total of 31 of those milkshakes. So I am looking for small, so I probably want to get rid of the large. So I'm going to multiply through by a negative. So this is negative 3s minus 3l equals negative 93. So when I put those two together, I get negative s is equal to um, 7, 17, negative 17. And so s is equal to 17. There we go. Let's look at number three. All right, this is going to be random line because they're all over the place. So let's check out this one. Put this one here. I want to simplify this. So I am going to deal with my numbers first which gives me 5 thirds, and I'm looking down here going, yep, they better be 5 thirds, because all of those are 5 thirds. Then um, I'm going to deal with my x's. I have two more of them on top than I do on the bottom. So that's out, and that's out. And then in terms of the y's, I have a lot of options. So one thing I can do is I can uh, move them, because if you have a negative exponent, it means to do the opposite of this division here, which would we kind of just flip it um, and then I get my answer. So that's one way. Or I could subtract the 3, the negative 3, um, and end up with a positive y as well. So either way, this is my answer. This one is not. All right, number 4. Make sure the following is not an x-intercept of all of this fun stuff. So the reality is I really need to factor this. Now, in terms of factoring, if it is a, a cubic and there are four terms there, I can always try seeing if it's factor by grouping. And in this particular case, I see the coefficients are 1 and 4 and 1 and 4, so that looks like it's a pretty good plan. So I'm going to take out an x squared. I'm going to take out a negative 1. The reason I take out that negative 1 is I want to make sure I end up with um, exactly the same thing on both of them. Now, one thing I didn't mention, but we do want to make sure we think about, is an x-intercept means that the y value is 0. So I did set my y equal to 0, and that's an important component of that. So in terms of finishing my factory by grouping, I have these guys here that get pulled out, and then I have x squared minus 1. So that's not done. So it would be lovely if it was. I do need to go ahead and factor my x plus 1 and x minus 1 to get my answer. So this is my negative 4 
this is my negative 1, and this is my positive 1. So check, check, check. This is the only one that is not the answer. All right, so number 5. Uh, let's see, a series, which means sum. So all of these look like sums. And I've got a variety of things going on here. Uh, let's go ahead and just plug in 1 into this equation. Because uh, I do have some zeros and some threes. I do have, let's see, four terms. So that would work between 1 and 4. 1 and 4 would work. 0 and 4 actually gives us five terms. But to 0 to 3 does give us um, four terms. So it's one of these two. Um, another way of kind of looking at this here is that um, this is getting bigger. That's our, our adder, 4 and 4. So that seems to be appropriate for both of those. This one here is a negative 2 for an adder, so that is definitely out. So now I can kind of check and see what's going on here. If I plug in 1 into this equation, um, I get um, 6, which is not my first term. If I plug 1 into this equation, I get 2, which is my first term. And so this, we can be pretty confident, is the correct answer. All right, factor the polynomial. Uh, this one here looks like it's nice and pretty. So let's see if we can do a little factor by grouping here. Um, let's pull out what an x squared and the biggest number I can pull out of both of those would be a four. I'd be left with three x minus two and oh, ooh, pull out a negative, three x minus two, what? So I get four x squared minus one times three x minus two. So those are out, and then I look at here and I go, uh-oh, I, I don't have any of those, but that's because this can be further factored, because it is a difference of two squares, and you square root, square root, plus minus, and these are all of our options, which this is out, and this one, exactly like I have, is the correct answer. Thanks for playing.